Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Um, so in the last hour in the mo this morning, we established a necessary condition for distinction of an induced representation, and what I ended up saying is that we can make it more explicit in the case where the subgroup is a symmetric subgroup. So uh, for this afternoon, G is a reductive PID group. And uh, I fix an involution. on G, and let H be the subgroup of G of fixed points by the involution. Um, so I want us to keep two examples in mind to which I will uh, get to uh, when we see some results. Uh, so the first example is of Galois involutions. So if E over F is a quadratic extension with Galois action theta, I can start with a group H, a reductive group defined over F and form the restriction of scalars from E to F of the group H considered as an E group. So practically what this will mean to us is that the, so that the F points of G are really, so our, I guess our group G, which is the F points of G, are the E points of age, while the group age is the F points of the original reductive group. Okay, so uh, in particular, this contains the case where uh, G is GL N of a quadratic extension and the age is GLN of the base field. Okay. And the other example that I will consider is the same example Fiona considered in her talk. So uh, G is GL2N and theta is a conjugation of transpose inverse by an element, by an anti-symmetric element of G. Um, so in this case, age is sp to n of f. Okay, and just because eventually I will write down some explicit matrices, so one has to fix a realization of the symplectic group, and the um, symplectic form that I'm choosing will be the following one, uh, where Wn is again the long vial element in GLN. Okay, so these two examples will uh, appear you, later on. Can you maybe explain the, the terminology? So you take H reductive group over there and. So and I think you, you don't need to worry about uh, ex knowing what extension of scalars means. There is some. some uh, some uh, algebraic geometric construction. But at the end of the day, what's important is you have a group defined over F, you look at its F points and its E points, and the F points are actually the Galois, the Galois fixed points. Okay. Okay, so why is it nicer to consider a symmetric space? 
So one uh, central reason is, so it was discussed yesterday that G mod age is always a variety, a variety of cosets, but in the case of a symmetric space, it has a nice realization as a sub-variety of the group G. Um, so if I look at the following set, or, so it's clearly an algebraic set, I'll define X to be all elements of G that satisfy the equation G theta G equals the identity. This is a set that comes naturally with a G action. Okay, so it's an action of twisted conjugation, so G X theta G inverse. Okay. Um, so if I take a coset G H and map it to G theta G inverse, in the above notation to G acting on the identity, well this is clearly a bijection from G mod H to the G orbit of E, which is a subset of X. Okay, so we identify G mod H with some sub-variety of X in this way. And in order to see that we're in the setting uh, we've discussed in the morning, so let me fix a minimal parabolic. Then, this is a result of uh, Helmink and Wang. The P node orbits on X is a finite set. So in particular, um, so if P naught is contained in P, take my favorite standard parabolic, then uh, well, one, the double coset space that the geometric lemma told us to study, well, it's really in bijection with the P orbits inside the G orbit of the identity, which is a subset of the P orbits of X. So it is a finite set, which was our assumption in the morning for the necessary condition. And another observation that we want, I want to make, well, if I denote by Px the stabilizer in P of x, where x is any element of this variety x, and let, let's say x is eta acting on the identity, okay, so it's in the g orbit of the identity, then it's fairly straightforward to see that the stabilizer is really the subgroup um, coming from the subgroups that appeared in the geometric lemma, the subgroups we induce from in the necessary condition. So these are the type of subgroups that we want to make explicit, and we want to make ex explicit as well a certain modulus function on them. Okay, so um, just one remark. So if x is in x, I can define theta x of g by conjugating theta, so composing theta with a joint x. And this is an involution.
on G, and well, if Q is any subgroup of G, then the theta x fixed points of Q are precisely the stabilizer in Q of x. Okay, so these subgroups we're interested in are really the fixed points of some involution on G. Um, so I'm going to state maybe the key lemma that allow, allows us to make things more explicit. Um, so let me call it uh, so good orbit representatives. Okay, so what the lemma is going to tell us is that for every p orbit in X, I can choose a representative with nice pro properties. And the nice properties the lemma is going to list is basically defining what I mean by good. Okay. Um, so for every p orbit in X, there exists X in the orbit, a nice, a good representative, such that uh, one, so if I take M and intersect it with theta X of M and call this subgroup L, this is a standard levy of some standard parabolic Q, which is contained in P because L is a sub is a Levy subgroup of M. Okay, so when I say standard parabolic, we fix the minimal parabolic. And what we mean is one containing the minimal parabolic we fixed. Um, second is that the intersection of P and theta x P has a Levy decomposition with Levy component L. And some unipotent radical, okay? The unipotent radical. But what is important is that this Levy decomposition is stable under the involution theta x. So this will uh, give us the following consequence. Oh, maybe I'll put it here. So the third property is that the group Px. Right, so it's the stabilizer of X in P. A priori, it must be a subgroup of this intersection because these are the fixed points of theta X. They must also be in theta X of P. Um, so because it, this decomposition is theta X stable, then it's fairly straightforward that this is the stabilizer of X in L times the stabilizer of x in R. So this is a straightforward consequence, but the real important property here is that, uh, so remember, P is a parabolic with a Levy M, so there is a natural projection from P to the Levy component. And if I project the unipotent radical, what we get is M intersect with theta x u, which is the unipotent radical of a standard of the standard parabolic m intersect q of m. Okay, so we've seen in Fiona's talk, actually, this is a parabolic subgroup of M. And if I call this 
group V, then what we're saying is that this has a Levy decomposition L times V. Okay. And one more statement that has to do with the modulus function that appears. So delta Px, delta P to the negative one half, if we restrict it to Lx, it equals the same expression, but for Q instead of P. So I'm just to rem remind you that both Px and these modulus functions are important for the necessary condition for distinction that we have developed in the first hour. So because of this third fact, that the projection actually contains a standard unipotent radical of a standard parabolic, we can deduce from the necessary conditions the following. Um, so let me just give some notation for Jacquet modules that I will use. So the Jacquet module So it's really a functor from a Levy subgroup to a group, right? So, so from representations of a group to representations of a Levy subgroup, and I'll just denote it by R, okay? Um, so explicating the necessary condition. So a, cor a corollary of the lemma is that, and this was in fact very nicely explained by Dependra in his talk, well, if you have a A ho sorry, a homomorphism on a representation of M, which is invariant under the unipotent of some parabolic subgroup, then it's going to factor through the Jacquet module. So this can be written as hom of Lx of the Jacquet module of sigma. And well, when we restrict it to Lx, we use the fourth part of the good representative uh, lemma to switch back to Q instead of So I know all of this is rather technical, and we will soon see examples of how do these things work in reality. Yes, so. When, once I'm writing home LX, I'm, everything should be restricted to LX, but... No, 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 no. L is a Levy subgroup of M. This is a standard Jacquet module. There is no relative thing about it. The, the whole point of part three is that the projection of the stabilizer actually contains the unipotent radical of a parabolic of M. This, this is an absolute theory, not a relative. So if you have a homomorphism on, from a representation, which is invariant under some Levy subgroup, then it factors through the Jacquet module. Well, what, what should appear here, but that should appear, have appeared everywhere in my talks, is restrictions to LX. But these restrictions I'm not writing. Okay? Is that, if that was the comment, then I'm avoiding writing the restrictions. So, 
so really the explication of the necessary condition is that so if i sigma is age distinguished then there exists x in the g orbit of the identity which is good such that the Jacquet module of sigma is Lx and delta Qx, delta Q to the minus half distinguished. Okay, so this is a This is the sufficient, the, sorry, the necessary condition for distinction. Uh, let me just make two remarks about why it makes this symmetric space formulation does make things more convenient for applications. So um, the first remark, I'm going to call X M admissible if um, M is a theta x stable levy, which is the same in our notation as saying that L is actually M. So there is no Jacquet module in the condition for such orbits. And the condition is so formulated that eventually one has to study only admissible orbits, but not for the Levy M, but rather for all its Levy subgroups, because um, a good representative is always L admissible. Okay. So yes. Yes. Um, not in general, but this is my second remark. And we will see examples where it's not trivial. So maybe this is the first remark. And the second remark is that, so this is a result of Lapid and Rogowski. If theta, if theta is a Galois involution, then this character is really a trivial character. So the result of Lapid and Rogowski is for admissible orbits, but like I said, we reduced everything to a setting where the data is admissible with respect to the sum levy subgroup of M. That's right. So, so what we see here is that even if we're only interested in question of age distinction by the trivial character, one encounters uh, for, for Levy subgroups related questions for distinctions by character. Yes, that's right. So what kind of sufficient conditions can one obtain with this method? Okay, so there are basically two cases where I know how to deduce distinction in general. And um, so let me assume that my x is good and m admissible. So 
The first distinction criteria condition is what I'll call the closed orbit argument. And that is that if the parabolic P is stable by the involution, but by the involution theta x, and sigma is sorry, mx delta px delta p to the negative half distinguished, then i sigma is distinguished. And the reason is that under this condition, the double coset of eta is going to be a closed double coset. Okay, so so p being theta x stable means that p eta h is a closed orbit. So if you remember in the filtration we had in the morning, closed orbits are the last in the, or can be ordered the last in the filtration. So really what we get is that from the geometric lemma we, we, we get, because of this assumption of MX distinction, we get that home age of the last component of the filtration is not zero, but remember home age of a quotient is contained in home age of the representation. But Vn was the last step of the filtration, so this is really home age of I sigma and one. Okay, so we get that there is an age invariant linear form. Okay, so if the necessary condition of the geometric lemma happens to be satisfied by a closed orbit, then it is a sufficient condition. And the second case is the open orbit case. So if um, P is theta, theta x split, and sigma is mx distinguished, then i sigma is h distinguished. Okay, so here, as uh, Fiona showed us this morning, this condition does tell us that the double coset corresponding is an open double coset. This is an open orbit. And then in order to this deduce distinction, one is using the meromorphic continuation argument, which in this generality is the result that Fiona mentioned of Planck and Delon. And as we have seen this morning, one needs to apply a leading term argument. Okay, so as we have seen in the example in the morning, uh, this is really putting the induced representation in a meromorphic family and showing that meromorphically one can, can, can lift the obvious invariant linear form to the fully induced, and then um, take some kind of a limit in order to obtain an age invariant linear form at, at the actual representation sigma. Okay, so this is really a local argument uh, in the sense that uh, it was proved in the building across the street. So, 
Okay, so let's see some uh, examples. So I want to describe how admissible, admissible orbits look like in the Galois example that I described. Oh, maybe I'm not going to erase this yet. The first example is for the Galois case, GLN E and GLN F. And I'm using the same notation I had used so far with a given parabolic subgroup and a good representative. And so we have P, which is MU. So if X is a good representative, then remember L was M intersect with theta XM. And part of what the lemma said is that this is a standard levy. So a standard levy of GLN should look like GLN1 to say GLNK in diagonal blocks. And I'm going to describe to you what does a stabilizer look like. So there exists an involution, like the permutation in k variables, which is an involution, such that the stabilizer Lx is the subgroup of all matrices G1 up to Gk, such that G of Wi is the Galois twist of GI. Okay, so this is really, uh, for every pair of non-fixed points of the involution, there is a copy of GLN I of E. And for every fixed point of the involution, you get a copy of GLN I of F. Okay, this is what the stabilizers look like. And from here, one can um, easily say what it means for a representation of L to satisfy the condition, to be Lx distinguished. So if rho, say rho 1 tends out with rho k, the representation of L is Lx distinguished if and only if rho wi is the Galois twist of rho i whenever i is not a fixed point and rho of i is distinguished, really GLN i f distinguished for every fixed point. And remember, this is really the condition we are after because there is no modulus function in the Galois case. Okay. So, with this data, 
And with some elaborate work on the geometric lemma, all the tools we've developed, one can prove the following. So this is one of the few cases in general rank where one actually classified all the distinguished standard modules. Okay, so this is a PhD thesis of my student that a standard module of G is age distinguished if and only if it is of the form So I'm going to use the product notation that Dipendra introduced to denote parabolic induction. And I'll explain what each representation stands for. So where delta 1 to delta s are only assumed to be essentially square integrable. So that means their matrix coefficients, so they have a character twist for which the matrix coefficients are square integrable mod the center. And sigma 1 up to sigma t are square integrable and distinguished okay, by the proper GL, their representation. Okay, so this is an if and only if it's a complete classification. To see that any such representation is distinguished is a combination of an open orbit and a closed orbit argument. If you start with distinguished representations, the sigma i's, and you induce to see that the induction is distinguished, this is a closed orbit argument. And in order to, once you know that this induction is distinguished, to get that the rest is distinguished, it's an open orbit induction. It's an open orbit argument using the results of Planck and Delon. The other way around, to, to see that this is a necessary condition, one is using the geometric lemma in a clever way. I'm sorry? Standard module may be reducible. That's right. So this is not a classification of distinguished admissible dual. It's still far from it. The distinguished generic dual was already classified by uh, Nadia Matranj. So a similar result appeared earlier for the generic ones for the case where this is irreducible. Um, but this is just one step towards uh, classification of admissible distinction, which is maybe the easier step. But even that step has not been done in many other cases. Of, so in some cases, he proved multiplicity one even when there is reducibility of standard. Under some assumptions on the standard models, he, he proves multiplicity one. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. So the necessary condition is derived from the necessary condition of the geometric lemma that we formulated. So but you have to study all orbits. yeah, you have to study all orbits, and you need to know Jacquet modules of the inducing data for for every orbit. Yeah. So you have to be very explicit. And I should even say that. So this is maybe a technical point, but. Dependra spoke about the fact that when you write a standard module 
as induced from temper, there is a unique way to do it. But for GLN, something extra happens. Every tempered representation is induced from square integrables. So you can write every standard module as induced from square integrable representations, or essentially square integrable, but you lose the uniqueness of ways to do it. And in order to prove the result of uh, Gurevich, one actually has to choose a particular order. It's a particular realization of the standard module that works. It's not every realization. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus on the second example. So G is GL2N and H is SP2N. So there is a fairly similar descriptions of um, stabilizers in this case, but this is an example where the modulus function also plays a role. It's not trivial. So let me explain the picture. So again, if x is good and L is GLN1 to GLNK, then what a stabilizer is going to look like, well, there will be again an involution. But now, it can only have fixed points if Ni is even. Okay, so this is another condition, and such that the stabilizer of X is going to be of the form, so G1 up to GK, where G of WI is, well, it's conjugate to GI if WI, sorry, it's conjugate to GI transpose inverse if WI is different than I, it really is conjugate by the long vial element. If we choose the realization we chose in the beginning, and GI is an element, element of SPNI if, the, if I is a fixed point. Right? So this would, net, would not make sense if I didn't require NI to be even for the fixed points. Um, and the modulus function so delta px delta qx delta q to the negative half of g1 to gk is the product over all i less than wi of the determinant of gi, absolute value. So there is an untrivial modulus function that plays a role here. No, 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 there is no negative half. Ah, here, sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, there is a negative half here, but not here. Thanks. Um, Okay, so the only case where there, are no, there is no modulus function if the involution is the trivial one, this re relates to the theta, sp theta x split case, the open orbit case. Okay. Um, well, the, so we can write down a condition for a representation to be a, distinguished by this character. So row one to row k. Let me assume it's an irreducible representation of L. Um, is Lx delta qx delta q to the negative half distinguished if and only if. So row of I is the absolute value determinant shift of rho of wi if 
i is less than wi. So I think this notation had already been introduced in one of the talks, so I denote by new the character absolute value determinant on any GLN. And this denotes the twist by this character. And on the fixed points, rho i is SP distinguished when i is a fixed point. Okay. So let me make just one more remark before I state what one can say about standard module. So this remark is of result of Hoimus and Rallis. So Fiona spoke about examples where no cuspidal, no supercuspidal representations are distinguished, and this is such an example, and this is a result of Hoimus and Rallis. In fact, they showed that no generic representation of G is age distinguished in the case of symplectic distinction. Okay, so um, every supercuspidal, but also every essentially discrete series is a generic representation. So discrete series representations, square integrable representations, cannot be distinguished by the symplectic group. That's the first observation. So in this case, we cannot really get a classification of distinguished standard modules uh, by the methods that we've seen here, uh, at least so far. Um, so let me tell you the partial result that we can get. So this is a theorem with Arnab Mitra and Eitan Sayag. So if um, delta 1 up to delta k is a standard module, such that delta i is not delta j for every i different than j. So there is no repetition. And let me denote by i this standard module. And if i is h distinguished, then there exists an involution without fixed points such that um, this condition holds. So delta of i is the shift by absolute value determinant of delta of wi for every i less than wi. Okay. So, so generic means that they are distinguished with respect to a maximal unipotent and what I call the non-degenerate character on them that I defined very early in the model. Here? Uh, no, uh, on the middle board, where you have yes. Um, this is a consequence of analyzing double cosets, all the double cosets with respect to a parabolic and SP. So it, yes. So it's a, similar, it's just a bigger case, so there are many more orbits, and one has to find a systematic way to analyze all of them. Okay, so. It follows from the lemma, the general lemma for good orbits I described, after some computations. Okay, so um, this is about what we can say for standard models. What about other representations? 
So again, like we saw in the morning, the geometric lemma information, double coset information eventually can also be useful to deduce distinction of other representations, which are not induced representations. Um, so I want to discuss a distinction in a family of representations that are called pair representations. So if delta is essentially square integrable, one can form the following standard module, so mu to the k minus one over two delta, mu to the k minus three over two delta, up to mu to the one minus k over two delta. So this representation is as reducible as it can be. Um, but it has a unique irreducible quotient which I will denote by u of delta and k. So this is uh, some generalized form of representations that in the Archimedean case originally were defined by Spe. And let me first just state what we can say about distinction. Um, so, u delta k is sp distinguished if and only if k is even. Um, so this is a theorem from about eight years ago with uh, Eitan Sayag, and at the time, the only proof we had was a global proof using automorphic forms. Um, but now, together with uh, Arnav Mitra and the methods that I introduced in these talks of the geometric lemma, uh, we have a local proof that, uh, in fact, of a generalization of this from a wider family of representations that I will not discuss here. But I just want to sort of outline uh, of the proof, the local proof. So the um, spare representations are quotients of these standard modules. Right? So we have So there's a kernel to this operator, and I'll just denote this kernel by k. And the nice thing about Sperr representations is that one can very explicitly um, describe this kernel. So I'm not going to do that because we don't have time, but I'll just tell you what the upshot is. So by geometric lemma methods, One obtains that I is SP distinguished if and only if K is even. So this automatically says that odd spare representations cannot be distinguished, right? Because they are quotients of something that is not distinguished. So we really just need to deal with the even case and show, well, we have an age invariant linear form here. That doesn't mean it factor to um, the unique irreducible quotient. But it will mean that if we knew that the kernel is not distinguished. And that's exactly what we can show in this case because there is an explicit description of the kernel. So this is by so certain Jacquet module computation. Uh, there is something called the Tadic determinantal formula. So one can deduce, and who, so Lapid and Mingers wrote this explicitly. One can write down K as a sum of certain standard modules, very explicitly. And one can show, so using the results, 
um, about standard models that we have, and all of these standard models will not have delta i's that appear twice. So we can use this result to show that all of these standard modules are not SP distinguished. So we have an agent variant linear form here. It has to be zero on the kernel, and therefore it defines the linear form on the even spare representations. So once we know distinction of spare representations, well, we know distinction of induced from spare. So The corollary is that if delta 1 up to delta s are essentially square integrable, then any representation of the form a product of even Spez is SP distinguished. And to show that if you start with distinguished representations and induce parabolically, you get distinguished representation, this is an open orbit argument. Why are these spare representations so important? Well, they're building blocks of the unitary dual of GLN. So Tadic classified the unitary dual of GLN. And so I'm not going to explicitly describe the classification, but let me just say that um, every unitary irreducible representation of any GL is a product, meaning parabolic induction of spare representations. So, okay, we have now a list of many unitary representations which are distinguished, and one can ask, do we have all of them? And uh, the answer is yes. So the real goal, if, if you are a perfectionist, the real goal is to classify all representations in the admissible dual, all irreducible representations that are distinguished. But if you think of the two major applications, one for harmonic analysis of G mod H, and two for um, period integrals of automorphic forms, which I'll discuss tomorrow, you're mainly interested in distinguished representations which are unitary. So for many applications, it's, it suffices to just classify the distinguished representations in the unitary dual, and this is ex an example where this is done. So we proved that um, a unitary representation is SP, and a unitary irreducible representation is SP distinguished if and only if it is a product of even spare representations. Okay, so one direction is on the board. It eventually follows from geometric lemma methods. There's another question. The other direction is really, you have a product of spare representations. And suppose that this induced representation is distinguished. Well, this theorem claims that all the KIs have to be even. So geometric lemma methods 
Um, at least I don't know how they proved such a result so far. So we had to go uh, beyond that uh, and use different methods, uh, which I was hoping to say something about, but since time is out, uh, I will not. Um, so what, let me very, very quickly say, what we actually show that any product of Sperra presentations does have some invariant linear form by some subgroup. But we can say, we, we can give a very precise recipe which product has which invariant linear form. And we have a generalization of the result of Hoymos and Rallis that says that if an irreducible representation has an invariant linear form with respect to one of those subgroups, it cannot have an invariant linear form with respect to another, in particular with respect to SP. So whenever one of the case here is odd, we show that there is invariance by a linear form which is not SP invariant. And from this disjointness idea, we deduce that it cannot have an SP invariant linear form. But all of this um, relies on completely different methods which are important to the study of local distinction. And uh, these are distributional methods, so studies of invariant distributions, which I will not discuss in this series of talks. So the local part will end here. Tomorrow we'll start with the global part.